Hey guys, David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. Uh, you may know what this is if you've dissected some engines before. Guys, this is a carburetor and sometimes carburetors get gooked up. So today we're gonna go into my uh, 25 horsepower Yamaha four-stroke tiller engine. And I'm here with my buddy, John Slepian. Hello. My mechanic, my friend, my brother, and he is going to help me get in the middle of this carburetor and we are going to clean it out and we're going to, he's going to walk us through what that looks like. Okay. So John, thank you for uh, helping out. My pleasure. This thing looks like it came off of a spaceship to me, honestly. I've never gotten involved with anything like this and uh, beep, 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 beep. yeah, it looks like it's something that would have me be orbiting the, the sun. So, I figured I would, it's time for me to learn some of this stuff. So John's being good enough to help us out. Let's get into this carburetor, clean it out, and uh, make sure that our fuel is running nice and clean. Guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get to the video. Okay, John, so we're, we're doing our carburetor cleaning, and that thing looks like a alien spaceship to me. Why don't you explain to us, what does a carburetor do? All right, so a carburetor, um, it takes fuel and air and okay. it mixes the fuel and air through a throat, through a hole basically that okay. runs right through it. And it regulates the amount of gasoline that enters that throat yep. and the amount of air that also enters that throat yep. by a butterfly. Okay and it lets those two things mix together before it enters into the intake manifold. Okay, we, we've got a gas line coming from our gas tank. That's right. It goes up into the intake here. That's right. And following the little black little hose there. Yeah. Down all the way back to the back through the fuel pump. Is that right? That's correct. Pumps it back out this Wait, let's see, through the fuel filter. That's right. Then down. Yep. And then. Wait. That, that's see. this guy here. Got it. It comes out of the fuel filter and then it goes into the float bowl. Okay, so it right. goes up underneath. That's right. Okay. Yep. And then it goes into the float bowl. And, and then... this is our little pan right here where the it fills up with fuel. That's right. Okay, now what? And then. Remember those little needles, those little holes, those jets? Yep, little jets. They're, they're submerged inside of our little pan, okay. right, which is actually our float bowl. Yep. Our, so our pan holds the fuel, and then the jet sucks the fuel up and into the throat of the carburetor. Okay. And into the intake manifold. Where That's where the air is. Okay. That's right. And then the air enters here. Air so enters here. Air goes in there. Fuel goes in here. They mix in the carburetor and then they go into the engine where it goes into the combustion chamber and the piston comes up and compresses the gas and the air. Yep. And the spark plug lights it and boom, it pushes the piston pushes down it and it turns the crankshaft. Got it. Okay. And so when, when, sediments collect in the carburetor it can clog it up and mess with your fuel your uh, fuel economy and your performance of your engine is that correct that's exactly right all right so now we are going to get into our carburetor and clean this bad boy out carburetor off is that correct that's correct okay let's do it okay so looks like these two bolts here they run all the way through the carburetor okay and into the intake manifold okay and they also hold on the air intake. Yep. So we're going to take this vent tube, which goes to the valve cover, which sucks the the um, vent ventilation yep. or the, the hot intake. oil. Yeah. The hot. So we're taking that tube off. We're going to pull it and get him out of the way for now. Okay. And then we're going to see what else we're going to have to take apart here. So we got. Another a 10 millimeter bolt there, a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and a connection. So we're gonna get it. Uh, let's see. Go. All right. Bingo. Voila. Thank you. Get the wire out of the way. 
here it's got a little clip in there voila got it yep we'll go for our 10 millimeter deep dish so that we can access it or actually with an extension so we can get it through here with one swivel on it okay and 10 millimeter yeah 10 millimeter 10 millimeter and down here just in case though just pull it out oh yeah we are yeah but just right just in case so here we just pull the clip back like that and then the shaft will come out Okay. Like that, and now when we take our carburetor off, it'll be free from that little Got it. Booger. So we can get uh, it. What are we doing first? We're gonna we're gonna take this cover. Okay. This cowling. The big black yeah. plastic covering there. That's right. It covers the flywheel which has teeth on it. Okay. And um, they cover it up so that when if you should take the cover off, the yep. cowling off, when when the engine's running, yeah, you don't get your fingers caught in it. Got it. So this is a protective thing for us. It is. And we're taking this off just to make things e life easier on us. That's right. To get at the bolt that's that's hiding. Got it. So you got to take three bolts out in order to get at one bolt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Got it. And just make sure. <laughs> Make sure they don't get mixed up. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay, so we got him out of the way. All right. So now we have a little bit better access to some of these bolts here? Yes. Good. Voila. Voila. Okay. So our little 10 millimeter bolts coming off. And, and that's going to take off this plastic uh, air intake thing. Exactly. Yeah, that impeller. Yep. That baby really. It's really bent up, huh? Yeah. Okay. Wow, it's tricky getting that big long bolt out, huh? There it is. Yeesh. And it's going to show us how tricky it is when it comes time to put it back in. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't look like something that I might do by on, on my own. There looks like a is that a gasket there that's coming out? That just fell? Maybe a, a rubber seal. Rubber seal? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's the carburetor. There's our carburetor. So, a rubber seal, which goes right in there. All right, so that's the guy mesh. that fell. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to put him down here so we... We don't lose remember him. Remember, he has to go back in there. Yep. And then, we're going to take our fuel line off. We'll put this underneath since we're dripping fuel now. Okay. All right, so this is gonna. This probably has some fuel in it. Yep. Okay. It does, and it's gonna leak out. Got it. Voila. And so we twist the line first, so that that we can pull it off. If, if we twist it, that helps get them free from the barb. And now, voila. Pesky little guy. Pesky. Okay. All right. So All there's right. our carburetor. There's our carburetor. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the float bowl off of it. Okay. We're going we're gonna to do it um, on something. We're going to make ourselves a clean little pad to do this on. Okay. So that we don't lose any critical part that yep. comes out of it. Good. All right. John is putting down some diapers. Yeah. Because our carburetor might want to pee a little bit. Right. Okay. And we don't want to lose anything. And we don't want to lose anything. So. so put him right there. Up Let's here. bust this puppy open. Okay. Here we go. We're going to go after our float bowl. And our float bowl. It's just like what you have inside the toilet there. You know that. that Same kind of principle. Yeah. So this is one of those pressurized uh, screwdrivers, right? Or what do they call them? Um, ratcheting. Ratcheting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so that helps you not strip the uh, screws, threads. Um, also, it does like a ratchet, so you can like go like this. Yeah. Click, 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 click. Um, but you Got have it. to set the adjustment here. Got it. So I'm just spinning it since we're not going too far. But it does have really sharp teeth. So that it doesn't, it goes deep inside yep, it the Phillips. It's not, got it. 
Yeah, and it's a number two Phillips. So you, okay. you have a number one, which would be a fatter, more uh, yep. fat head. Yep. And this is a number two, it's a little skinnier. Okay. And we're doing it in the crisscross pattern. We take it apart in a crisscross and we put it back together in a crisscross, meaning crisscross, crisscross. Okay. And the reason we do that is so that when we're tightening things, they we tighten it equally. And once we take the bowl off, the bowl's gonna pretty much tell us what, what we have to do next. Okay. If we pull the bowl and there's a bunch of slimy, gooey, garbage stuff in, there. stuff in there, then we know we have to go deep. If we take the bowl off and it's spotless, okay. we still have to examine, but we may not have to disassemble. We may be able to just blow it clean with our with our Break cleaner stuff. Cleaner. Yep. Good. Good. And then, okay. Well, here we go. We're gonna. Here we go, guys. Yeah, gonna, the moment of truth. Dun, 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 dun. Whoa. Looking pretty good, huh? Looks pretty clean. Yep. From what I could tell. That's right. And, okay. it, and it is. What would we be looking for right now, John, if it were dirty? So <clears throat> remember that it sits on the on the engine like that. Right. You know, so all so this is the bottom actually. Oh, so that's the bottom. Yep. So and if there was cr crud collecting there, we would see it. That's right. And what happens is this thing fills up with fuel to about here. And then okay. this little float drop, it, when it's inside there, and that has fuel in it, the fuel, as the fuel level increases in here, it pushes that float up. Okay. And when the float goes all the way up, it pushes that little needle, see that it's hooked to on the other side of this. Yep. There's a needle, and that's called a needle and the seat. And okay. what that needle does is it goes up into the seat and it restricts once that once that needle um is in there it's got a rubber tip on it yep. it holds the fuel from fit coming out of that hole and into the bowl okay so it basically stops the fuel from filling it up any further and coming out of the overflow okay so what we'd be looking for in here is varnish so if it was all you can see that there's a little stain there it, it probably yep. had some varnish in it at one time, but it's really clean and whatever fuel has gone through it has pretty much cleaned it out. Now, we can see right there, see right there? Yep. There's a little bit of gook. Yeah, a little, a little bit of, a little bit of dirt. Now that dirt is enough to go in that needle jet. You see that hole uh, in there? Okay, so that little, inside that little, is that brass? Yep, that's a brass. That's so called, it's a brass fitting. Yep. And that little tiny hole, if that gets plugged with something, that would be bad. Kaput. That would stop Kaput. the engine. Yeah. That would stop the engine. Yes. So that little tiny hole, guys, when the fuel gets pushed through there to inject the spark plugs, is that correct? That's right. Well, ultimately what it does is that, that fuel, so that's all, your whole tank of gas ultimately goes through that little Is that hole. right? Yeah. And that's why it takes so long to run out of gas. Got it. Unless you're wide open. Unless you're wide open. You know, and then it goes a little faster. Got it. But anyway, that hole right there is where all the fuel that enters the engine goes. Okay. Ultimately through that little tiny hole. So wow. if you wonder why your car goes so far for so long before it needs more gas, because it's all that fuel that you pump in there at the pump, two yep. gallons, 10 gallons, 20 gallons, it's got to go through a couple holes like that. Got it. Okay. So this looks pretty good. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our, and this is the reason that why we wanted it to be really clean here, because we can't afford to have any speckles of dirt or dust in any part of Got it. what we're doing. Because first we're going to take the float take assembly. Take the float off. Yeah, and we're going to have a look just to make sure that our rubber tip is intact. That's the needle, and okay. that, that that's rubber. You can actually that little rubber tip. Yeah. Okay. That, that looks that looks okay, right? Yep. And so sometimes you take them off, and there's they got like a big ring around them. Yep. 
And that's usually when they are leaking, when you have gas Got like it. leaking in here. And that rubber tip goes inside of that other brass fitting? In that seat, yep. And that's called the seat. So you okay. got the needle. Okay. And the seat. And that, okay. And got that's it. where the fuel enters the bowl. Got it. It comes out of that hole and it fills the bowl up. And then it gets. So, so that one could get clogged too, is that correct? Yep. Yep. And that's that's the filler. That's the one that, that's filling up this okay. float bowl. And that's the jet. That's the one that's sucking it up. And ultimately, it comes up through that little barrel in there in the center. Yep. And it gets sucked into the engine. Actually, it gets sucked into the engine going that way. Got it. Okay. And the air goes in this way. Got it. And this is a metering rod. And what that metering rod does is it the air that flows by it. Yep. It gets some of it gets sucked in there, and it it determines how much if the airflow is correct so that it can adjust how much gas it allows into the throat and into ultimately into the engine okay but this all looks very clean yep it sure does that's good news we're going to use carburetor cleaner yep specifically okay um, as opposed to our brake cleaner okay because we're dealing with such tiny little rubber pieces and yep. seals that our brake cleaner could actually affect that the integrity of it it could shrink it got it so all these all these little rubber black rubber things that go around the screw entries and the all that stuff needs to be tight yeah so you and clean and tight so okay. we're not leaking fuel exactly got it tube okay and we're gonna fabricate it so that we can use it practically because if we can't turn the can on it sideways as it runs low on cleaner yeah it will stop coming out so yeah, if we keep it. the can straight we'll get a lot more out Got of it, it but we have to change the angle of our straw we're going to go in in our main jet yep and i watch just watch your eyes yep uh, i'm just going to tap it for a second and i felt it come out so i know it's clear and just so you can see what's happening, it's gonna come out your way. So be aware that it's yep. gonna blast out that way, I think. Can you see it? I see it, yep. So, yep. so we, uh oh, so we know that our jet is clear because it's blasting, blasting the car through. cleaner right through it. Good. Yep. Okay. So, really, that's our only concern is that. That main jet is clear, okay. and it is. This is our secondary jet yep. for idling. We're gonna do it again, and you can see it come out there probably. I'll feel it. Okay, so the butterfly is closed. You wanna open it up. Okay. And we know that that's clear. Good deal. Alright, and we'll just make sure the throat's clear. And since we don't have any, like, contam any contaminants, and yep. we have both of our jets clear, yep. we really don't have to take the jets out and soak them. Sometimes when these guys are, are plugged up, yep or starting to get plugged up, they'll affect how the, the boat boat's running. It probably won't, won't run at all or it won't idle. Yep. And then you'll find that these have corrosion in them, but usually this will also have a bunch of corrosion in it. Right. If we were to open the float bowl and there was a bunch of corrosion or contaminants in here, we know we'd take our jets out yep. and we soak them in a, in a tank. Okay. But since we're, they're clear and we're able to blow uh, carb cleaner right through them. Yep. We know that everything is clear. We're gonna just move on. Moving on is good. Yeah. Now this is where it fills up from. Oh. And it's coming out everywhere it's supposed to. And what it does is it that fills the bowl like we talked about before. Yep. 
you're gonna wipe out this bowl too? Yes. Is that a jet that comes in the bowl? Um, it's a, yeah, it's a drain. Drain. So this this is actually the filler. Yeah. Where the fuel line connects to that. Yep. And then it actually comes up through here and it goes into those two holes. Okay. And then it's it's um, measured inside the throat of the carburetor, and it, through these in the in the casting. Yep. There's holes all through it and air and fuel moves through the castings. So again, if we were to find contaminants in here, we take this, strip this completely down, all the way down, take the jets out. They and, unscrew? Yeah, they unscrew. Got it. That's for a regular flathead screwdriver right there. And you soak them. And then you soak them in, in a oh, tank. Oh, so that's, then you take that out with a screwdriver. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And you, you soak them, and you, we'd soak the body and you everything. Soak the whole thing. Yeah. Got it. And um, the same stuff? Uh, no, we would use a, a, a can, a carb cleaner, carb cleaner can, can with a okay. basket, and then we'd take all the, everything apart, put everything individually, each little part alone in the tank or in the basket, put it back in the can and let it sit overnight. Got it. And then until all of our varnish was gone and it looked like that. Got it. You want without it to, scrubbing you it. You want it to look like that without scrubbing it. Yes. Good. Without scrubbing it. Good. Now you're just wiping out the bowl a little bit. Yep, just make sure that we don't have any crud on it. So anything we don't see. So you're just going through the top of the bowl and just kind of wiping the little cracks and crevices, trying to get out any any little particulates out. That's right. Okay. Like this little. And what that is is some is just some glue that when they put this the seal in yeah they glued it down which is fine and as long as our seal doesn't have any corroded marks on it or yep. tears in it yeah we can use our seal again this this uh carburetor is really super duper clean super duper clean yep good and once we got it back together there's a couple other little things we'll check okay but first we're going to put our little plug back. Oh, I, I missed that. So that's a plug. Yeah, this plug goes right there. Okay. That screws on? No, it just pushes, pushes in? pushes in. Okay. Like that. I and missed then, that. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so then we're going to take our, our float. Yep. And we're going to go back where we started. So we're going to take our, our little needle and put a needle in the seat like that oh yeah see the, ne the needle goes right in the little seat and you see these little arms are still on the plastic yep. valve there yep and then this little hinge goes like that our needle and seat are back together and then we just tighten this little screw here to hold our hinge together make sure that it moves freely Floats back on. Yep. Great. I'm just gonna barely snug that because carburetors are very soft. They are. The metal is really soft. Yeah. Okay. It strips and breaks and the hat, these corrode and fall. How apart. much is a new carburetor like this? All right, uh, I guess this probably a couple hundred. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. So we make sure that our when we move our throttle linkage. Everything is moving. Is it moving right? Yep. Good. Now, bowl goes back on. And our bowl goes back on, yep. And... That stuff goes on top of there, right? That's right. And so that guy goes in that long hole. Okay. And that guy goes in that, that little hole right there. Yep. So we're gonna put him just like... Oh, wait, just one part. Just like that. Voila. And then we want to make sure we could hear the float. 
and falling back you hear, and you up hear and down. Falling? Yeah. Make sure it's not it's free from anything in there, and it is. <laughs> I can feel it moving. Good. Great new learning experience from my mechanic friend, John. My pleasure. You see, remember we asked how the fuel moves around in yep. there? So, see, these these are fuel ports yep. in the casting. So, fuel is actually moving through these castings. Got it. So, then we're basically putting the four screws back on, tightening them down, and then it's time to reinstall our carburetor, isn't it? That's okay. right. And okay. we're also going to we're going to look at our over in our overflows. Okay. Um, Check that out. Yeah, just make sure that there's nothing accumulated anywhere where we can't see it. Got it. Hiding. Okay, so here we're going to go into our uh, drain on our bottom of our carburetor, and we're going to make sure there's no dirt in this safety plug. Okay. And this you can actually do when the engine's on the boat. Okay. In case we were looking for like contaminants in the engine, I army mean, in the fuel, okay. it was acting funny and it just wouldn't run right. Okay. So we would pull this guy off and we look inside. This is a jet here. You can see. Oh, so the it's hole. another jet. Yep. Yeah, you see the hole in the center. And okay. You see the holes on the sides. Yep. Wow, <coughs> those are tiny. Tiny, tiny, and they do look a little dirty. So what okay. we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna blast them clean. Okay. And there's a hole on each side, so just watch your eyes yep. for a second here, and uh, it's gonna spray. So it's all right. And you see it coming out the sides. The fuel is just. Yep. So you just you just pressure blasted that's, the stuff, the cleaner through those little holes. That's exactly right. Got it. And now we just put it back in. Yep. Let me make sure that we. Put our washer on it. Washer, wow. And actually what happens in there is fuel enters that little jet and then yep. it comes out those sides and it goes inside the housing again, back into here. It does. And that's the actual choke. That's the electric choke. The elect oh, really? Yep, so it, what it'll do is it'll give the engine a dose of um, fuel when you're starting it yeah mechanically it'll give it extra fuel and it'll cut off the supply of air got it put that back in there and we just when it bottomed out it just stopped turning that yep. means it bottomed out and then we're just going to give it a little turn past that and that's it that's it good we are good to go wow okay yep. good right. to go is good to go good time to, to get go. her back on the engine huh indeed let's do it all right What's next, John? Okay, so this is our intake manifold. Yep. We're gonna make sure that it's clean and clear. And so we're gonna clean it. that intake manifold. Yep. We're making sure that nothing foreign in there, n nothing dirty, and this will pick it up if it is. Looks pretty clean. Yep. Good. I can see that I was going to say varnish, but no. Okay, good. Clear. Good. All right. Clear sounds good to me. Clear. Now, seal. Oh, yeah. The seal that was so interesting. Yes. And that goes on the rim of this thing, right? Yeah, that's our air intake. Okay. So we're just going to set him here for a minute. And... We're gonna make sure that it's clean. So clean that, that off we, as well. Yeah, when we put it back together, it's got some place for it to go. Gotcha. All right, so since that hose is way over there, we'll put him on now. He's got that little latch, right? Yep. Just slide that down. That's right. Right where he was. Great. Put him on the inside. Right. Yep. Okay, so he's going to fit just like that. Can we hold in place? On our seal. Um, yeah, that'd be great. You got him? Um, yep. Good? 
Yep, I got it. All right, thank you. So what we'll do is we'll put this guy in place. Putting the bolt in. Yeah, actually. Yeah, you're probably gonna need to get that seal in first. Yeah. So we're gonna try this way. Do you have clean saliva, John? I hope so. <laughs> but I'll tell you that gasoline. Yeah. It doesn't taste very good. No. Damn this. We got lucky. All right, after some fiddling with the uh, the gasket there, we're able to get that on and get these bolts in so that the carburetor is back in place. Now we just gotta make sure that our seal is in place. So if that seal's not in place, what happens? It, it won't sit flush like it is here. It'll be bowing Bo out. Bubbled out? Yeah. But will that like leak gas or no it won't do anything because no. it's air it's on the air side oh got it it's not a gas seal it's an air right. seal but we can't we don't want it to be bowed out got it. it 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 seems like it how can you get that on there like that right but the reality of it is when you rock when you rock, wiggle this guy around yep he rolls into into his groove he does yep because it's he not it, I wouldn't be able to tighten that and it wouldn't be flush. Oh, okay, we, so you're looking for this yeah, to be flush for, to the metal. Right. And, and it's flush. And we're looking, Good. Yes. Okay, this is our throttle linkage arm. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to put it back where it came from, which is in that hole right there. Yep. And then we're going to put the little latch on it, which holds it, locked it in place. It just swivels up and snaps on. Oh, okay. that's easy. And so that's our throttle. So when you crank that shifter here, that's what gives you your gas. Yeah, that's what gives you your gas. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Then, so far, so good. Yeah, then we're going to take our air vent air hose. Air vent hose. Yeah. Slides right on. Mm hmm. And we're going to put him right. So there's, that must not be pressurized, right? Right. Just, it's just sucking, um, just sucking, uh, Vent, yep. venting the crankcase because the crankcase builds up heat yeah and there's a lot of oil in there so it it will it needs to be vented yeah so it doesn't come spurting out of the out of the valve cover got it and what it does is it just sucks it back into the intake and got it. runs it through the motor cool and, and then, so then that guy snaps and what well, do you have to snap that thing back on the little latch? Yep, we do. All right, how does that work? So that looks like we took them off, just we slid them off. Slid, so slides right on. Slide them, we heard the click. Yep, I heard the click. The wires go underneath yeah. the little harnesses. Yeah. And, and then that guy snaps into place. That's right, and that's for our electric choke. Yep, good. Voila. Voila, is that it? And, uh, yeah. That's, that's it, huh? That's it. Carburetor cleaned. Yes, sir. Excellent. Carburetor cleaned. John? Yes, sir. We have a clean carburetor? We have a clean carburetor. We have a clean carburetor. Mm -hmm. No, you little stinker, you. <laughs> All right. Guys, um, hope you learned something. I learned a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you learned a lot. We're going to have quite a bit more where this came from on general boat, uh, marine motor mechanics and... and maintenance with my brother my friend and my mechanic john slepian john thank you so much for your help amen thank you david it's right. been a, my pleasure sir carburetors <laughs> that's a big deal <laughs> all right guys uh like subscribe and share till next time watch your lip watch your lip <laughs>